there and welcome, I'm Jordan, and in this video I'll be sharing everything you need for placenta encapsulation. I recently just finished a program of how to encapsulate placentas, and I thought I'd make this video for anyone else that might want to encapsulate their own or um, start their own little business. When I was looking around, there wasn't a lot out there, so I thought I'd make this video um, just for anyone else that's interested um, so they too can have access to the information of what you need. Also, if you are encapsulating your own placenta, you do not need all of these things. Um, a lot of these things are if you are doing other people's, um, just because you don't want to cross like the things you have at your home and you'll need other precautionary items um, to keep like someone else's blood off of you. Um, you might want to do your blood pathogens training just so you know um, the risks along with working with someone else's blood. So the first item you'll need if you're going to pick up placentas at the hospital is a cooler. Um, I personally got a red cooler and I added biohazard stickers to both sides just because I think that looks more professional um, when entering a hospital. They know that you're serious about what you're doing. Um, I think it gives you a little more credibility. I also purchased scrubs, just a top and bottom um, for when I go pick up, but also for when I'm preparing other people's placentas, just because I did not want um, the possibility of blood getting on my normal everyday clothes and then washing it with everything else. I wanted an outfit that is designated just for when I'm preparing other people's placentas. So I did buy scrubs. Um, of course, that is optional. You do not need to do that. Um, in my training, they also suggested you get a name tag when going to the hospital, picking up and dropping off, just to make yourself look more official and give yourself credibility that you are taking serious the service that you're providing. Um, I think it comes across when you look the part, um, those things also relay that you do care about what you're doing. Um, so that is what you need when picking up at the hospital or at someone's home or birth center is the cooler, biohazard stickers, an outfit, and possibly a name tag. So there is additional gear you may want to have when you are preparing someone else's placenta. Um, you would not need all of this if you're doing your own, um, but if you're coming in contact with someone else's blood and their body fluids, there are precautions that you may want to take. Um, so like I said, I do have scrubs specifically for when I'm preparing someone else's placenta that will be washed on its own away from the rest of my laundry. Um, I also have a mask um, just because to me, I think that would really, really gross me out if someone else's blood um, got like by my mouth and my nose, that would just not be okay with me. Um, so you can do a mask. You may also want to do um, like a face shield and that is just for any possible splashing. So I got this one, um, these like shields just attach and they have like a film layer that you can remove to make it clear and they go on just like glasses. And so the purpose of this, of course, is to prevent any splashing getting on you, but specifically for your eyes. Um, you could also wear like eyewear, um, but you do not want someone else's fluids getting in your eye because that is where you could pick up something that they may have, um, just like that mucous membrane where it crosses over. Um, so I have this as well. Of course, something else you need when you're preparing someone else's placenta is gloves. I got these disposable nitrin gloves and they are latex free, powder free, and protein free. Um, and, and you'll probably go through quite a few of these with each placenta um, because whenever you touch the placenta and you have to touch other supplies like the trash bag or poopy towel roll, like you do not want someone else's blood getting around so you will need these gloves. Um, I also bought a big pack, I don't know if it was 100 or 50, of disposable aprons just as like a splash guard. Um, I maybe took extra precautions and also got sleeve coverings um, just again because I don't really want someone else's bodily fluids touching my skin. Um, so I bought these sleeve coverings. You just put your arm in like this and it is just another layer to protect you against someone else's blood. Uh, of course, if you have a cut or anything, you will need to cover that with bandages. Um, so that might be something you would need as well um, for your gear. But that is the gear you need. Um, and you know, of course, you don't need all of this, especially if you're preparing your own placenta, you probably don't need any of this gear. But if you're doing other people's, you may want to consider um, wearing this gear now I'll get into what you need for sanitizing. Um, let me go get my bucket and everything so I can show it. 
but I'll be right back with that. Okay, so I have my bucket and you will need a bucket for sterilizing. Um, you'll sterilize once when you're starting your preparations and then again after to clean up everything. Um, so I bought a bucket and this is to do a bleach solution. Um, so one part bleach to 10 parts water. And I will fill this up and put my supplies um, that I've used, like a, my knife and my cutting board, everything like that, in this bucket to soak for 10 minutes. And that is what you're gonna use to sterilize, especially when you're using things that you're gonna use for other moms. But if you're doing your own, um, you don't really need to do a bucket. I'm sure you could do it in your sink. But just to keep like things extra tidy, I wanted to do all my sterilizing in a bucket. And I will dump this solution in the toilet um, just to get rid of it that way. So this is what I'm gonna use the bucket for. Um, I also have a spray bottle, which will have a bleach solution for spraying on the walls, the counter, um, all the surfaces that I will be using. Even the handles for the faucet, I'll be using a bleach spray. Um, you also will need to do cleaning with your normal soap cleaning products and then do the sanitizing process. But I'm sure you already have soap at your house. Um, I've also seen a lot of people use plastic to prepare their space, um, especially if you are doing it specifically in your kitchen that you cook in. Um, I've even seen people put the plastic inside their sink. I'm not going to use a space that is not my kitchen, um, but I am still going to put plastic up on the walls and the counter area um, just because I do not want splashing and going anywhere in contact where my kids are. Um, so I'm going to use the extra protective layer of using plastic. Um, you can get this like, it's like painter's plastic but it's a big sheet that you can just cut. And then of course, if you're gonna use that, you're gonna want tape to secure it. Um, I'm just gonna use Peter's tape I got at Menards. Um, also for cleaning, you are going to need one sponge, one for each placenta you are doing, um, and you will dispose of this after each placenta so that there is no cross-contamination. Um, so you can use this for washing and then doing your bleach solution everywhere and letting it sit for 10 minutes. You can use it before you prepare the placenta and after you prepare the placenta, but after you finish the cleaning process and sanitizing process for the placenta, you need to throw this away and you'll use a new one for each placenta you do. Also what you will need to differentiate um, between trash and someone's body fluids is biohazard bags. Um, again, you can get all this stuff on Amazon. They are just bags like this and you'll set it up. Um, you can put this inside a normal trash bag, but you use this to keep everyone safe that handles trash so they know do not touch inside here. Um, it has someone's body fluids, uh, but I should let you know if you're disposing of a placenta because you've come across it, that maybe it's infected and you cannot encapsulate it. You cannot put the placenta in here in the normal trash. You would have to take it to a facility um, or you could just give it back to the family. Um, but that is one thing. This is more so for like blood clots or any other things that you may have to just throw away. Um, so you'll need biohazard bags. Okay, so on to what you will need to prepare the placenta. So you'll need chucks pads for the surface that you are going to put the placenta on. I'm going to use a strainer for washing the placenta. Um, some people just hold it in their hands. Um, I don't want any possibility of it like touching, like sitting on the bottom of the sink. Um, so I'm going to put it in the strainer and wash it this way. And you can flip it around in here, of course. So I'm going to use a strainer when I'm preparing the placenta. You will also need scissors and these are kitchen scissors and you have to get scissors that come apart so that you can properly sterilize them. Um, so you can open them and they come apart like this and you would put them in your bleach bucket like while they're apart. Um, so you will need scissors and this is for removing the umbilical cord and the amniotic sac. Um, so you'll need your scissors you will also need a knife. This is an eight inch, just Amazon basics knife um, and a cutting board. And this is for preparing the thin slices of the placenta to go in your dehydrator. 
Of course, you'll need a dehydrator. And I got this, this Kasori one. You need five trays and it should fill up probably most of that. Um, so it comes off like this. Here are your racks and you can put parchment paper. So I have parchment paper on here. Otherwise the placenta and the blood can get stuck and you'll be scrubbing. Um, so just to keep it extra clean and a little less work, um, use parchment paper. You cannot use wax paper, um, but that is what you need for preparing the placenta and you'll have it dehydrate for a long time. Once it is done, you are on to the grinding and encapsulating process. You can use a, a magic bullet is what I have. It's right now in my garage, so I'm not going to go get it but you can use a magic bullet, any other kind of blender. You could even use like a coffee grinder one, but that will take you forever. Um, so just a normal blender would work fine. And once you blend the placenta, you can really offer it in capsules or some people even make like truffles. And what you do is you mix that powder in with your baking supplies and that way they would have a portion in each like truffle or whatever you're preparing. Um, you can do it that way. I'm going to do it capsules for my clients. Um, I will show you my capsule machine. Um, I have to go get it. Okay, so I'm back in my capsule machine. Um, I actually had a challenging time finding a capsule machine and a few of the websites I felt that sold them were very scammy. Um, so my husband actually went and found one for me and ordered it for me and he got it from Herb Affair. Uh, and I really like this capsule machine. So this is the capsule machine. It comes with a lot of parts. You do not need all of the parts. So what's great about using a capsule machine is you can prepare a hundred at a time. There are also capsule machines that I think do 50 and I think there's some that do 25. Um, but typically when you're preparing a placenta, there'll be somewhere between a hundred and 200 capsules. Um, so this is just going to cut your time by a significant portion. Otherwise you'd be using like a bowl and putting the capsules together one at a time. Um, so this is just to make it all so much easier for you. And what's great about using a capsule machine that I did not know about is you just pour the capsules in here, you shake it about um, when it's on, when it's on here, and they just fall into place. You don't have to make sure they're um, all poking up the right way. Um, the majority of them will fall into place. You have to adjust a few, but that is why you may want to consider getting a capsule machine. And of course, if you are encapsulating someone's placenta, you need capsules. I bought pre-separated capsules so I don't have to spend time separating them myself. There's bottoms and there's tops, and you just pour them into the capsule machine, shake it around, and it does the work for you for the most part. Um, so I have pre-separated capsules. So I bought vegan capsules for my clients. Um, and you wanna ask them if they are allergic to anything before you prepare the placenta. Um, but I got the vegan ones because I know some people will not be appreciative of the gelatin, like ones made from animal products. Okay, and now on to the very fun part and that is packaging. Um, someone's placenta to give it to the mom make her feel special by um, packaging it cute. I think that's important. So for me, I bought these cute little amber jars and they come with little stickers to write mom's name on. Um, and I'm going to use the tool, the pink tool to uh, wrap around the outside part of this and make like a little puff so it feels special for her. Um, if your clients wanted you to prepare a umbilical cord keepsake, you will need a little mesh bag to put it in. Um, this one is a five by seven, and I think that is a good size, um, but you'll want little mesh bags, and then you'll want little bags to put both of these items in. You can even add in like a card. You can tie your tool on the top, put mom's name, and I think it's important to make moms feel special and let them know that you put care into preparing their placenta for them. So that's everything I have for you today on all the items you will need to um, prepare placentas. And this is mostly for if you're starting your own business. Like I said in the beginning, you do not need all these items if you are just 
preparing your own placenta at home. But if you are doing like it as a business for clients, you may want to have all these things to make it easier for yourself, to make it cute, make mom feel special, um, to protect your body against their fluids. So I hope this video was helpful. Um, if you are wanting to start a placenta encapsulation business, if you are preparing one for yourself, or if you're just curious. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.